Hi, Pilates people. I'm Tracy Belcher. I'm here in my Miami studio, Pilate the studio, and I'm a dual certified Pilates teacher and level two Franklin method teacher. I'm coming to you from Miami to talk about cleaning Pilates apparatuses. So we're going to bring you some tips and best practices for cleaning and maintaining every Pilates lover's most prized possession, our equipment. So last year I spoke with the manufacturers of Nagahide Vinyl, which is the vinyl used on Pilates apparatuses. You can check out those posts on Pilates.com. This year, I'm super excited to have with us Patty Corey, an Australia-based Pilates teacher who's been servicing classical Pilates performers and equipment since 2014. Patty is also the author of the ebook Reformer Maintenance 101, a guide to servicing your reformer, which is available at, I'm going to put a link um, attached to this, to this interview where you can find that audio book. So Patty, welcome. Thank you, Tracy. Very nice to be here. Tell us about yourself. How did you get into servicing Pilates equipment? Um, so I'm a Pilates teacher by day um, and reformer maintainer by night. Um, we were at CP one, CPE one year, I'm a Romanus Pilates CPE, and David Rosencrantz from Graz was out visiting, um, and he asked, but does anybody want to get involved in reformer maintenance? I think I was the only guy in the room, and everybody just kind of turned around and looked at me. <laughs> and um, I kind of went from there, so I kind of worked with Graz for a while to find out how to go about fixing reformers and maintaining them. And um, yeah, I kind of started from there when I was maybe 2014, so almost 10 years now. Awesome. So it's been good. So did he kind of train you the ins and outs in the beginning? Yeah, between him and his maintenance department at Gratz, um, or kind of the guys on the floor talked me through it. Um, one of the guys there, his name was Russell. I don't think he's with them anymore, mm -hmm. but he kind of had done a lot of maintenance work um, for many years before he joined Gratz. So he was able to kind of walk me through the process that they do. Um, and then I started implementing that um, out here in Australia. Um, and then kind of after a little while, I would get a lot of like calls and emails from people in other cities in Australia and other countries asking would I travel to kind of do the maintenance work for them. And it's not really so feasible, been so far away from everybody here. Um, so I put it all down in, a, in an ebook and kind of just consolidated all the information. And then when people would get in touch, at least I had something I could send off and say, look, this will kind of walk you through, start to finish, what you need to do. So yeah, it took a couple of years to put together, mostly because I procrastinated with it a bit. Wow. But um, I got it all together and yeah, I'm really happy with it how it turned out. Great. So I was a, before I was trained in classical Pilates, I started in contemporary Pilates and I had a balanced body studio. And then I got my okay. classical Pilates training, fell in love with classical and went all yeah. in on the classical and got a full classical studio. So the maintaining a contemporary studio is a completely different thing from maintaining a classical totally studio. Totally different. Can you tell us about like some of the special considerations for classical equipment? Look, in my experience, the contemporary stuff doesn't need so much maintenance. They're quite like, while, you know, to the untrained eye, they might look like a reformer or a reformer. They are quite different in the way they're put together. So with the cords instead of the leather straps, it's just different. Um, like the cords don't stretch where the leather does stretch. So there's a little bit to be thought about there. Um, but mostly it's the way the wheels are set up. So on say let's use balanced body for example their um, wheels tend to be they have ball bearings in the wheels so that's why when you push out on the reformer it feels a lot smoother than if you there's not that same kind of resistance that you get on like say a grats or a pilates designs reformer and that's because those wheels are just like uh it's just the wheel and then it's a little axle and a bolt that runs through it and you just kind of grease that up and that's what kind of gives that you know, where you jump on a reformer and you have that feeling of, oh, yeah, this is different. That's what that feeling is. The drag, the drag yeah. of the classical wheels. I would, I would say that's the biggest difference, really. Well, the, like the springs are different as well. But um, no, the biggest difference is the wheels and the way it's set up underneath. So when it comes to the wheels, let's talk about that in a class okay. on a classical reformer. Um, what, 
what is most likely to inhibit optimal function of a classical reformer wheel? So as I was saying, the bolt that goes through the wheel is coated and it has to be coated in grease. So when it comes brand new, you know, like anybody who's unpacked a reformer might have noticed like a yellowy sort of residue around the wheels. And that's where they've been greased up in the factory. Um, now over time, that'll start to dry out a little bit. And it also is really good at attracting dirt, dust, hair, mm. a lot of hair. Um, and that's what starts to kind of to slow that down. And then over time, as the, as the wheel moves in it, the grease starts to get pushed out. So you start to get that little bit of metal on metal. So loads of people have heard it in their studios where it's like a real screeching noise on the wheel. And that's like a big telltale sign that your, your reformer needs a service. What are some of the common mistakes for servicing wheels? Like if people, when people try to do it themselves without the assistance of you or like an ebook or, you know, they just try to go and service it themselves, what mistakes do people often make? The biggest mistake is in the use of the grease. So what was recommended to me, and I have a, my tub. Now, I wouldn't recommend getting a tub this size because I'm this is 10 years old, like, and I'm, I'm about halfway through. You can get small tubes of the same of the same stuff. So it's called white lithium grease. You can also buy it as an aerosol. Do not buy it as an aerosol. It's no good. Like it, it doesn't, it doesn't work. You need the actual grease, which you know it's a little bit messier to apply, but it gives that nice coating and cushion to the. And yeah, you don't get that screeching noise with the grease. Whereas with the the aerosol one. Like I've had studios contact me say, look, I just serviced this reformer. It's making this noise. What's going on? And it's it's the use of the aerosol as opposed to the actual grease itself. So yeah, always the grease. Okay. Um, let's talk about springs. So I'm in Miami, which is a notoriously humid climate. And I have all classical springs and they all have a little bit of rust on them. Do all classical springs rust? It really comes down to where you're located. So Sydney is where I'm at. Same. Like it's gotten more tropical in the time I've lived here. Um, and the humidity last year was through the roof. And I'm, my studio is, it used to be a car mechanics like a long, long time ago. So it's got one small window and it's kind of built into a hill. So the airflow is horrendous. So the air just, the air just sits here. And last year when it was very humid, I had a lot of problems with the humidity. So this year I've discovered that my springs are doing the same. So yeah. that's surface rust and it's not a big deal. Okay, um, it doesn't mean the spring needs replaced. It just needs uh, some steel wool. And you just take a piece of your steel wool, just rub down to take off the rust. And then you need to seal the spring. So. I usually would use WD-40. Now, for anybody using WD-40, do not use it in your studio. It stinks to high heaven. It is horrendous smell. Um, so I recommend taking your springs home with you or taking them out of your studio, spray them down somewhere outside with a nice, lots of ventilation, and then just let it dry out. And then you kind of you can kind of bring them back into the studio at that point, but you know, don't spray WD-40 in your studio. Your that is such a like great it. tip um, so right. that you can actually wash it off because that's exactly what mine look like. And I always thought yeah, I had no, to No, it's just surface them. rust. The, the springs themselves are really robust. Like, you know, they, um, I don't think there's a chance that they'd rust through. I've never seen that happen. Anytime I've seen rust on the springs, it was easy to clean up. Contact the studio months later, two months later, ask how the springs are. Fine, no problems. So, how do you know when you do have to replace a spring? So I've never seen, like in the 10 years I've been servicing reformers here in Australia, I've never seen a reformer spring that needed replaced. I have seen a Cadillac spring, though, a leg spring. Mm -hmm. And you'll just to look at it, so you can look at it and see, and it should be quite uniform. Like everything should look the same the whole way down. And if you're looking along your spring and you can see like a space that's quite a bit wider than, you know, than some of the rest of the spring, probably time to look about your springs warped a bit and it's probably time to look about replacing it. Okay. So that would be what I would say, like definitely for everybody and like inspect your spring, like clothes, 
and then kind of pull the carriage out, say we're talking to a reformer, and have a look. And it should all look really uniform. Like even when you do pull it apart, there shouldn't be like a big gap, small gap, small gap, small gap. It should be consistent the whole way through. Okay. Um, the number one question that we always get when I take questions for this series is what is the best way to clean the vinyl? What can we use? Um, well, look, soap and water is a good start, like a little fairy liquid. Do you have fairy liquid in the States? Like the um, so washing up liquid? We use we use here Dawn. So most of our okay. like the Nagahide people and then the manufacturers will say either Dawn because that's what we use to like whenever there's like an oil spill and stuff and they have to clean the oil off the birds. They use like okay. Dawn. That's the mild dish soap. Um, and that so that's what's considered here like the the name brand mild dish soap. And they'll tell us to yeah. use a one to ten dilution of that. Yeah. Um, because that's just kind of I, I guess the safe bet that's generally what they tell us to use is is Dawn. But then some people yeah. use stuff like my we have something called Myers. I don't know if you have that and 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 other mild dish soaps, but that's name okay. Brand. Well, look, a popular one out here would and it's what the one I use in my own studio is is eucalyptus oil. Now we're talking like maybe one or two drops. I haven't confirmed with anybody if that's safe to use on the reformers, but look, my studio has been running for been for quite a while now. It's, it's been, been years and I've had no problems. No all problems right. at all. Now, when I go to service somebody's reformers, I do use something different. So I use method. Um, and you can get this just at like the supermarket. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I first started, we we couldn't get it at the supermarket. I had to order it in, especially. But now it's in our local, you know, grocery stores. And um, I wouldn't really recommend using it day to day. I haven't tried using it day to day on mine. It's it's a bit stronger than you know your general dish soaps, but for that once or twice a year, whenever you're serving your former, it brings it up really nicely. It, it kind of takes out those you know the sort of stubborn stains that maybe won't just go. Yeah. And um, but yeah, that's what I use on a service. I yeah, imagine but, that probably works well on the frame too, like trying to get all yes. the stuff off the frame. Yeah. Yeah. It's all purpose cleaner and it's an alcohol free one. So I think that that helps as well that it, it doesn't have alcohol. I, it's just to avoid trying to dry out your, your vinyl and have it like it can crack sometimes. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that's what I use when I service, but I don't recommend any of the studios that I work with to go and buy a bottle and use it every day. A lot of people here like to use tea tree oil because of its antibacterial properties, but I've heard that that also, and I, I want to say that maybe when I did the interview last year with the Nagahide people, they might've addressed this. I have to go back and look it up, but I've heard that it dries it out also. Do you know anything about tea tree oil or other essential oils like that? I've never used them. So I can't speak, you know, and I haven't come across any studios that said, oh, we use tea tree oil here. It okay. would be either eucalyptus or just the soap. Okay. Um, and then just as an aside, anybody who the, um, the manufacturers all put out a best like practices or whatever for, yeah. for their equipment. So you guys can always look at that. I have links to those on Pilate.com on, on the series. And then also the Nagahide people last year addressed some of these questions. So if you want more information about what you can use, you can go check out those blogs on Pilate.com as well. Um, what about wipes? So people want to know, like, what should they use as a wipe? Paper towel, washcloths? Do you have any recommendations? Just I can, on that one, it's just what I use myself in the studio. And what the majority of studios that I visit, just like a washcloth. They're mm -hmm. kind of a bit more environmentally friendly. Chuck them in the wash at the end of the week, bring them back out. Like, it's that's what we would go with here. Mm -hmm. um, I have seen some places that use, like, the gym wipes and stuff. But again, look, I don't know about using them day in, day out on on the, the upholstery for the reformers. I would be afraid to use that because of the chemicals. Yeah, on. same. Yeah. Right there on the side of like what the manufacturers kind of recommend, I would just stick with that. Yeah. I mean, some people are afraid that it's going to leave like a soapy residue, but I read once that you should just take, like you can like just wipe it off with a clean one afterward and wait for it to dry. Um, but I have never noticed that it leaves a residue because it's so diluted. No, neither. It hasn't been a problem for me. No, no, and I suppose that's it. If you are that concerned about it, like during COVID, I know we were cleaning for everybody kind of on top of gear, but like we would have used um, 
when we use like more harsh kind of things in the different studios, like I was working in a few studios at that time yeah. and we were drying it off afterwards just because we didn't want to leave the water on the vinyl and, you know, having it just cleaned up straight away would kind of protect it. But yeah, I kind of, I don't know, I think out here particularly, things have kind of calmed down a little bit on the cleaning every five seconds yeah. sort of front. So um, yeah, we've kind of just, in my studio, gone back to normal what we was doing before that's what we're back to doing now i was shocked when i spoke to the naga hide people last year and they told me there's only three ingredients that they have tested on the on the vinyl and they're trying to you know keep the coating in place so they test like the coating i forgot what it's oh, called okay. but they said mild soap diluted alcohol and diluted bleach <laughs> And I was like horrified wow. that anybody would use bleach on their equipment. I would not do it. I don't no, recommend it. I'm not brave enough for that. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. But, you know, if you're in a, a pinch, you can always kind of go look on their website and, and see. Because I think the vinyl, the vinyl is used in hospitals and stuff. It's used in so many different okay. situations. Yeah, different settings. Um, so that in that situation, it would make sense. And our beloved Pilates equipment, we just couldn't imagine. No. <laughs> it's a little bit different than a waiting room chair. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, let's talk about cleaning the fabric parts. So like, what about cleaning the, you know, like the reformer leather loops where you go in for like short spine? Um, and do you, how do you recommend keeping that sanitized and clean? I don't, I wouldn't go at the leather too much. Yeah. Like, I would, with the extension straps, different story maybe, like I would just pop them in the wash but not, you know, not too regularly. But whenever I feel they need to clean, they come home with me and they go into the washing machine just with a load of washing. Yeah. And um, I don't think I'd pop them in on their own, like with them bouncing around the machine, but in with a, like a load is the way we would do it. Um, the leather though, I kind of leave that alone. Yeah. I mean, so a I lot of- it After I clean the vinyl, I just kind of go inside with that. Yeah, quick, that quick swipe around. But that, with getting the leather wet and stuff like that, I kind of would avoid that personally. Yeah. Um, but the extension straps there, man, they can just go, like same with my caddy and um, leg springs, the loops on the end of them. They'll just come home every now and again and they'll go into the machine okay. just to kind of keep them clean. I, t I keep a little spray bottle of diluted alcohol in my studio. And sometimes like in between clients, I'll just spray like Perfect. the, the yeah, fabric. Like a light spray. Yeah, a light spray. Perfect. Um, okay. So this is something that happens to me. The, on the frames, uh, my frame gets like black track or yeah, black tracks yeah. from the wheels. So what is yeah. that? Does it mean, is that a, does that mean it's a problem? Like my alignment's off or something? Not really. I mean, so depending on where you have your springs on, on your reformer and what you're doing. Uh -huh. Like if we're working on one spring on particularly if it's on the extreme, say it's on the extreme left, just that one spring, your reformer's gonna swivel a little bit. Do you know what I mean? So if yeah. we're on two springs, that's why whenever people are doing like stuff like short spine, clients go to take off two springs on the same side, I'll just adjust them back so it's one on either side so that the reformer's a little bit better balanced. But the wheels are on the sides, they're called guide wheels. And they're literally that's what they are. They're guide, they're there to guide the reformer out along the the frame and the track on the frame um but yeah it's just so they don't bump off the sides really like it's metal on metal is not a nice sound so they're there to keep the reformer aligned as it goes in and out but as the wheel touches off your frame it leaves a wee bit of residue behind over time and that's what causes those black marks up and down the sides they can just be cleaned off again i use the method okay. method and just an old rag and just get stuck into it and it starts to come away now those are the guide wheels, right? So do you ever notice on the tracks of your reformer, there'll be like little black yeah. dots that won't those. wipe off easily. So that's like a bit of dirt or something. Uh -huh. It's just over time kind of been rolled into your frame. So if you're struggling with that, then I take the another little bit of the wire wool or the steel wool. Strokes. So go nice and long on it so that it doesn't, like if you're just kind of going at it on one particular spot, it'll change the color in a little bit. But if you go nice and long and smooth, it just starts to lift off. Um, and that just kind of, it'll come back up to like clean, clean the way it arrived. But that's all it is. It's just like a little bit of dirt or something that's got 
compact it down. I'm gonna get, have to get a steel wall. No, they're handy, so handy. Do you know anything about using WD-40? I've heard various, um, like, well, you said you could use it on the springs, but like, I think they're- That's all I'd use it for. Use, using it, but you, should, you wouldn't use it anywhere. I mean, they definitely shouldn't use it on the wheels, right? No. Yeah, no, no, no. just, just the lithium. Do you know. Just, just the white lithium. white lithium grease, yeah. Um, look, the, and the WD-40 is more as a sealant. Like it seals and kind of, it'll protect against that rust coming back. That's what I would use it for. I, I can't wait to try that on my springs because I really, it works well. really a problem. The other thing they say about that is always spray or put the water on the pad on your washcloth, never put it directly on the vinyl. And I think one thing that that helps with is that it doesn't get like residual spray onto the springs. Like if you were to just spray your reformer mat, yeah, then it would kind of, it kind of sprinkles down into it. A little bit every time. Oh yeah, direct to the washcloth then it's only going on your vinyl, I suppose. So yeah, no, that's a good little tip. Um, let's see, what else did they ask us? We So we asked um, the Pilates community for their questions. And so I'm reading off some of them. Um, do you know how often like wheels, springs, and leather straps need to be replaced? Well, you mentioned springs that how to look at the spring and see when that needs yeah. to be. But what about I'd like, work off that? What about leather wheels. straps? And wheels? Okay, well, let's look at the, the leather straps, right? So they stretch over time. Like you'll notice like your the feel of a brand new strap as opposed to one that's kind of worn in a little bit is quite different. So this this the leather strap will it'll stretch over time as you use it. So underneath the shoulder blocks, there's two long screws that can be adjusted. And so when the thing with the straps is they don't really um they don't stretch at the same rate. So you can end up with one longer than the other. Quite often you end up with one longer than the other. So underneath there's a little screw with two bolts either side of a of a little frame. And you can adjust it back and forth as you need to. So as your straps become too long, so like there is a measure for your for how long your strap should be. So it's like I go off the width of my thumb, or like the top of your thumb, that little bit, and past the shoulder block. The leather should run past that before you hit the D-ring that your handles are attached to. Yeah. So you clip the handle to the D-ring, and the D-ring's attached at the end of your, your leather strap. Um, so that should run about a thumb, thumb, like the top of your thumb past. There is an exact measurement for it, but I can't remember. It's in my book somewhere. Um, and whenever that gets too long, you can adjust underneath. So you can shorten the length of that strap. Now that'll hit a point where you run out of screw and it can't be adjusted anymore, but it doesn't mean that the straps necessarily need to be replaced. Like I take mine to a shoe cobbler, someone who works with leather. And he cuts my straps for me. So I think he's cut them twice for me now just to bring them back down. But the straps are perfect. Like, there's nothing wrong with them. They've just gotten too long. I did have one strap. So the straps are glued together at a certain point. And like, if you go and visually inspect, you'll see like a, where it's, it's glued together. Mine snapped one day. Fortunately, with a client I've known for a long time who did not panic because I was planning it. But um, it just snapped. Like right before Christmas, I thought I'll get to the Christmas holidays out of this and then I'll get it fixed when I'm closed. Oh my God. But it, it snapped with a week to go. But same thing, brought it to my guy and he just looked at him and yep, yeah, super, I'll glue it for you. And he done a little bit of stitching with it. So even if they snap, you can always bring them to shoe cobblers or a dying, it's a dying job now. Like there's not that many of them around, but if you find one, They've generally been doing it for a while. They're good with leather and they'll have no problem. I've, I've heard also people take their leather to the people who like work with horses, I guess, like. Oh, that's a good shirt. Yeah. So that's I guess a brilliant it, depends, idea. it depends what's in your community. So like for instance, in my community, I'm in Miami, and everybody has boats here. So the people say whenever they give a problem with the vinyl, like call the, the people that repair the vinyl on the boats because they're all, those people are all over the place here. But now Definitely. if you're in like Kansas, yeah. that's not going to get you very far. No, exactly. So no, use your local community would be my advice. And like the guy who does mine, like he, he had no idea what I was handing him. And I was like, yeah. oh, it's for exercise. 
it's definitely yeah, then you have to explain what Pilates is, right? Exactly. And <laughs> um, so, but no, he was able to fix it, no problem. And he's done quite a few bits for me. And like, yeah, so I'd recommend like a, a leather worker shoe cobbler, or I'd never thought of like somebody who does the kind of the saddles and stuff for horses. Yeah. That's a great idea. You just got to think about, okay, what do people in my community use leather for? What do they like specially make? But yeah, there's, everybody has a shoe, somebody who repairs shoes probably. So that's a great tip. Um, what about wheels? How do you know when wheels need to be replaced? Um, it becomes quite obvious. Yeah. Okay. So the wheel itself, like it's normal for there to be a little bit of the black starting to come off the wheels, right? And like, but a little bit. But if it's loads and regularly lots and lots of like, oh, I just cleaned this thing down last week. And why is it black again already? It's probably time to replace the wheels. Now, okay. you'll get a lot of use out of your wheels before they need to be replaced. And just on that, so when I do a reformer service, I'll flip the wheel to the other way because it's a little bit off the track. So I'll turn it so that the wheel, it wears more even. Like, you know, people who like wear one side of their shoe walk a bit funny. That's such a good tip. I'll turn the wheel that. so that it so that it starts to wear on the other side. And that kind of keeps it a little bit more even. Like if you're turning them every six to 12 months, yeah, it just makes it all move a little and um, that's more that's aligned, I think it's a good way to put it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it today. <laughs> I'm rotating. We got you got to rotate your wheels. It's like you rotate them in the car, right? Big time. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. <laughs> All right. Um, so somebody, I'm going to read some just some questions from our Pilates people, our Pilates community. So one of the questions they asked is how to repair a cut in the vinyl. Do you have any tips for that? A cut in the vinyl, I would say there's tapes that you can buy. Um, just at a local hardware store, I'd have it. There's vinyl tape you can buy. Now, getting one that specifically matches your color um, might be difficult, but if you can put up with a different color vinyl tape, I would go with that yeah. until until it hits the point where you you can't cope anymore and you need a you know your OCD kicks in and you need to replace it. In which case, contact the manufacturer. They'll they'll be able to send you out um, just the vinyl. And then you get your hands on a, on an upholsterer and they can swap it out for you. Again, hard to get your, well, I know in Sydney, it's hard to get your hands on a good upholsterer. Yeah. They're used to doing like, you know, seats and stuff. We have hand them a reformer couch. Maybe they'll just, you know, they'll need a couple of runs through to get it exactly right, but they can swap it over for you. There's also on Amazon, there's some like liquid leather repair kits, but you have to kind of mix the colors yourself. So. Wow. I know that's like they'll give you like the it sounds like a rainy day colors. activity with my daughter yeah, I'm afraid to do it I have some I have some where my dog chewed on the corner of mine and I've been wanting because it's a good place where it's not going to totally ruin it you know if I yeah. touch it a little bit but I'm going to eventually take it make an attempt at that we'll see maybe I'll record it for everybody to watch um oh, that, let me know how that goes that's, but no, the one I would use would be the tape yeah, that sounds the a tape lot. has worked well, and it, but it is just a temporary thing. Like, you know, eventually you have to pull the tape off and replace it, and, and then at a certain point, you just have to give in and go, Right, it's time to get this We're thing reupholstered. Um, and that's a great tip also to ask the manufacturer who to use because I remember one of the studios I worked in got it recovered and it wasn't quite right. And I don't think the people yeah. knew what you know how to work with Pilates equipment. No, I know what you mean, and look. Like, I know that you can get, Gratz will send you out, um, they send me out a new cover for my reformer, because I have a gray one and a black one, and thought I'd want to have two black ones, but kind of like having a gray one and a black one, so I didn't change it over, but I have it here, but it's cut to size, so it's cut to, you know, the dimensions it needs to be, there's like the little bits cut out for your shoulder blocks, stuff like that, so I would definitely recommend just contacting those guys and getting it to, I'm sure with something like that, they could just air send it out, like it doesn't have to you know, it can be sent quite easily. Yeah. And so, yeah, those, that would be what I would say. When you hit that point, just contact whoever manufactured your reformer, get a new one sent out. They'll be able to get to the exact same color as what you have, if that's what you're after, or maybe change it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, somebody says, ever since I moved my brand new reformer across the country, the rails have had a slight drag sound. 
clean them and the wheels profusely and still hear it. It feels okay, it just bugs me. Do you think dust could have gotten into the wheel bearings? What might create a drag sound? Yeah, it could be something like that. I'd probably need to see it and hear it to give a definite answer. But look, I would say just go through the steps and clean it from head to toe, like get into the the housing, like what, what the wheels are held in. I'd definitely say take the wheels out of in all four positions or all eight positions, the guide wheels and the carriage wheels. Mm -hmm. Just pull it apart, clean it up, regrease it, put it back together. It should take that drag sound away. There's only so many moving parts where it could be causing it. So that would be, you know, 99% of things you get sorted out by just doing that simple step. Yeah, I could I could see that happening moving because they're so rough with everything that if it just gets like knocked, yeah. too much and, you know, what you were talking about with rotating the wheels might be something to think about or just replace. Yeah, so maybe another thing to check would maybe be if they've gone through and changed out the wheels to make sure that the bolts were put in the right way. Oh. So when you're putting, and I found this out the hard way because it, it made a horrendous noise at the studio one day but um so the bolt will stick out a little bit further at the end you, you screw the nut in so they always have to be on the inside if it's on the outside yeah it makes a really nasty noise when it screeches along the inside of the rail so maybe it could be something like that but look I'd, I'd really need to see and hear that one so if that person wants get in touch and send me a video of it I've done that with people before where they've sent me a video of their reformer and I'm like oh that sounds like Oh, how can they get in touch with you? Where should they send it to? What's your email? Uh, I have uh, my studio website, probably the best way. Just go through there. So that's pattycoreypilates.com. Um, and yeah, if anybody has any random questions that we haven't covered, feel free to send it through and I'll take a look at it. Do you have any, somebody asked about the threads. So it says the threads on the corners of my long and short box are starting to show and open up any ideas on what to do about loose threads. Oh, same. That's the same if you get like a rip on the, on the reformer carriage. So that would just be a case of get that vinyl tape. I think you can get it on Amazon. Um, I buy it at a hardware store here, but you can get it on Amazon, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And just cover over those corners. And again, put up with it until you can't put up with it anymore. And then it's probably time to reupholster the box. Yeah. Somebody else says it's sunscreen season in the South. I know all about that. Eek. Mm. My tennis golfer students seem to bathe in it. So hard to get that stuff off effectively. Any tips for getting off sunscreen? Uh, look, I would say for something like that, end of the summer, whenever people are stopping using the sun cream, go with the method that and just get stuck in. More generally though, I would like it. We get it out here too in the summer in Sydney, it gets quite hot, so there's a lot of sunscreen. Um, get down to put a towel down. That's what I do. It, you know, you, and there's, there's some companies that make like, they're like towels that are for your reformer carriage itself. And they again, they have like the little shoulder block cutters. So you get one of them if you want it, but I think just getting them to bring a towel and, you know, make sure it's a small enough towel that it's not hanging over the edges or getting in the way. But, yeah, something like that. You're or, speaking where they're about... just not making contact with the vinyl. Speaking about towels, um, that's also really important when you have people who sweat a lot. Like here, if I have people yeah. who just are really like, they work really hard and they sweat a lot, I always make sure they have a towel because that's another thing that causes rust on my springs. If they're sweating all oh, over sure. the springs. Yeah, so I'm always looking here. Well, it's salt towels. water, like they're sweating. So salt water is just going to make things rust straight away. Yeah. Towels, towels, towels. Keep it clean, guys. Um, okay, so anything else? Are there any other tips that you wanted to throw in there? Any final thoughts? Any common mistakes we all seem to make? Or I do the same with the springs when I talk about rotating the wheels. Every now and again, just swap your springs over. Like everybody takes out two metal springs for their short spine. It's always two metal springs, two metal springs. Change your middle springs to be your outside springs. And then they're all getting the same sort of wear. That's such Just small idea. things. Like. I love that. I'm doing that today. I'm doing the rotation of the springs and wheels. Everything's getting rotated. <laughs> yeah, everything's getting rotated. It's happening. And the other thing is, I always have my dog in my studio. And I know there's got to be dog hair in my wheels. I know that's not good for Definitely. it. Definitely. <laughs> 
I need to get yeah, in there. Yeah, 100%. Possibly. That stuff's getting in there for yeah. sure. Uh, um, all right. So you, so someone wants to get in touch with you about classical Pilates apparatus maintenance. You said they can reach you through your website. Um, tell yeah. us one more time the website they should go to. Uh, so the website is pilates.com. I'm sure if you Google Patty and Pilates, it'll come up. There's not many Patties doing Pilates as far as I know. Um, the other way, probably probably a little bit easier, is just to message me on Instagram. So I have a Reformer Maintenance page. Um, so it's Reformer Maintenance 101. And um, yeah, if you find me on there and just shoot me a message through there, I do sometimes like the ask me questions, those sort of things on the stories. So yeah, I use that one to kind of keep a lot of the maintenance stuff and I throw out like random tips and stuff every now and again on that page as well. Great. All right. Well, thank you. That was so helpful. I love some of those tips are ones that I'm definitely going to use. I'm so happy, um, oh, I'm happy that you came on and, and shared all of this knowledge with us. And if anybody is ready to tackle your reformer maintenance, you can purchase Patty's ebook. I'm going to put a link um, in the caption here so that you can go directly to it. So Patty, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay.